Hello everybody, it is Gaz Jackson. Today we are talking about the electric collars. Look at them, there they are, the electric collar there. And what happens when the dog barks, I'll just use my remote control for this. You will see, um, actually it's on the other side here, just rub something above it and you'll see the flash there, which gives them a small pulse. Now, do I recommend these? And yes, I do. Absolutely magnificent training tools, and it's an essential for any person to have that's got a barking dog. These are absolutely beautiful, and they work very, very quickly. And they're also super humane, because a lot of the time, the dog will only need like one, two, or three pulses, and you can stop the barking problem straight away. So now I'll just address a couple of other issues, and then I'll get into all the different areas, these things will work magically on your dog. One of the things that you probably would have heard is that I've heard they're cruel. Someone says it, you know, fries are dogs and they do backflips and God knows what else. Absolute load of rubbish. And this is generally pushed by, by people with agendas um, such as extremists and extremist organizations like the RSPCA with their views, um, that it doesn't line up with their ideology. And you, there's also a lot of fake news. And I think this one um, that I remember was from the RSPCA years ago where they showed a, a, an inspector showed three little burn marks on his arm with it to show how cruel these are well the middle one is plastic it doesn't do anything and these ones don't burn either false news fake photos and this is a big problem now also um, I know many many people in the RSPCA and I've trained many of them how to use electric collars and they do it on their own dogs and dogs that they're training for other people they also use pinch collars away from the RSPCA. These are RSPCA employees. So even they use electric collars. And I also know of a uh, rescue group in um, New Zealand that was gonna be closed down by the council because of all the noise complaints. They were anti-bark collar, and all of a sudden, they got bark collars, put them all the dogs, it fixed all the problems up very quickly. And now they use electric bark collars. So there's a lot of false information, a lot of misleading information on them, but they're absolutely magic and I'll explain a few ways on how these can work and how to set them up um, so that way you can have some smooth sailing with your dog and some quiet times without barking. So generally when you get the collar and you fit it to the dog, I recommend letting the dog uh, walk around with it for about a day or a few hours first. You don't wanna put the collar on him, he goes out, barks, gets zapped and he associates it with the uh, collar and then you'll find you'll end up with the dog which is absolutely perfect with the collar on, take the collar off and the dog barks like crazy. So with the middle one here, this is activated by that vibrate and that has to be on the dog's throat. So just right there and put it right on there for it to, um, activate and have it on so it's firm so it's basically that is touching uh, the dog's neck but not not really really tight and not loose so it's flapping around so as long as it's firm and just there have it all set up and then ready to go but before you do there's a couple of things you need to check out first and one of those things is, does your dog actually need to have a bark collar on him? And uh, if your dog, for example, is scared of things and absolutely petrified of the outside world because he's been unsocialized, because the vet said keep him away until he had all his vaccinations, etc., etc., and now you've got a dog which is basically scared and, and barks through fear at um, people, do not use one of these, okay? And that's it, do not use one of these. I suggest that you seek a professional dog trainer to be able to assist and evaluate and so on because what happens if he's barking at this other dog through fear and you put this on him and he also gets pulsed on that that's going to generate even more unsureness uh, more fear etc etc so you do not put on a dog which is scared like this it's basically um, for useless barking where the dog just runs to the fence and just barks at anything that moves or barks at the possums and barks at the person down the street and things like this and that's where these are most effective on and if you have any doubt Get onto a professional dog trainer and then get the evaluation and work out whether you actually need one of these or not. If your dog, for example, only barks at say three o'clock in the afternoon when all the school kids come past, then don't put it on him all day. Just go out, put it on him at two o'clock, make sure it's all fitted correctly, supervise him, and what you'll see is that the dog's gonna run out to the fence there and bark at the um, bark at the kids like normal, and it'll get the beep beep, then he'll get zap, and it'll be like, oh, what happened there? And then he might be a little bit unsure. He might go woof, 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 and bark. Oh, the same thing happened there. And generally, they only take two 
to three, and then what they do, they come running back to you and go, Dad, Dad, something happened over there. I barked at that kid and, and, and something bad happened. And that's what you want. There's no association with you. The dog barked at this person and then got the zap and now it's associated with that, so I better stop barking. And then next thing you'll find that the dog will sit back, a little bit unsure, he might growl, get a warning beep, and then he might go a little bit further and just sit there and watch. Now this would be probably the first time where the dog is actually sitting there watching all the people go past without actually running the fence, barking and carrying on. And that could have been his automatic reaction. At three o'clock, sees a kid up and down the fence going nutcase, and that's where a um, couple pulses there, and all of a sudden he's sitting back, doing nothing, watching everything. So now this has taught him an alternative behavior to the same situation. In the kennels, we actually use these very successfully by teaching dogs not to be uh, reactive and aggressive to other dogs. And how we did that, when we had a dog in for training for aggression that wants to take out other dogs and that, we will put one of the bark collars on them, put them into a kennel facing another series of kennels with dogs all looking at them. And when the dog starts aggressing and starts flipping out at the other dogs there, he gets pulsed about two or three times and then he is sitting there nice and quiet and he's as good as gold. Then from there, we'll move him in next door to one of the other dogs there. He might have a growl, the same pulse will happen again, and then he figures it out. And again, this is the first time where the dog has actually been able to sit there calm, relaxed, in front of other dogs, only two feet um, between them, between the, the pens, and he's sitting there looking at them. And the dog's never done that before because without the collar, that dog's hitting the fence and aggressing. So these things will also stop animal aggression and also stop it developing it into developing into something much much more serious if you think, well, I want, I still want a good guard dog and these things are gonna stop them from barking and, and that's a, uh, a question that comes up all the time. What I recommend in that case there is encourage a dog to be a good happy dog behind the fence and bark and let you know when people are, are, are there, but you also want him to be quiet on command. So these things, he can actually put the collar on him on certain times of the day. For example, three o'clock after school when all the kids start going past, uh, you can do it at different times of the day that won't affect his, his guard work, but it might be just going on him just to get a behavior and taking it off. So it might only be on him for half an hour or something like this, and he'll still be a good bark, he'll still be a good watchdog, but you can fine tune it that he only starts barking when there's actual threat to the property and not um, barking at absolutely everything that moves, which is when he sees dogs, possums, anything else. So many people are against these uh, because they either don't know how they're used um, or it's against their ideology like the RSPCA, which is in the process of trying to have these banned everywhere. And as a result, thousands of dogs will be put down for simple problems that could be fixed with one of these. And also professional dog trainers, some may be against it because they're gonna miss out on 10 private lessons. Why show someone one of these and have them fix a problem themselves? So if you had a look at how to fix a dog from bark in the old way, what have people done in the past? They go out, sit down, shut up. They start yelling at the dog and that, and the dog gets vocally dominated by the owner. Now the dog is scared of the owner and then the dog's barking at something and then you run down get here dog and you drag the dog off by the collar so all these things are affecting the dog and also can be reverse training where the dog barks and he activates dad to come down the stairs so every time that do dependent dog misses dad he goes whoa, 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 or whatever and then dad comes walking down the stairs shut up sit down sit down and the dog's all happy to see dad so there's a number of things that can happen um, with the training that can have a reverse effect on the dog these things work and they work very fast, they're very effective, don't be scared of them. If you have a barking problem with a dog, get out and get one of the bark collars before they're banned. I'm Gaz Jackson, bye for now.